Hello everybody, this is Barbara Ann. Welcome to my channel, Straight Out of Context. We are going to go through the second song of Taylor Swift's new album called The Tortured Poets Department. The song is named after the album, or the album is named after the song. It's the second track, and we're going to get right into it. You left your typewriter at my apartment, straight from the Tortured Poets Department. I think some things I never say, like who uses typewriters anyway. But you're in self-sabotage mode, throwing spikes down on the road. But I've seen this episode and still love this show. Who else decodes you? And who's going to hold you like me? And who's going to know you if not me? I laughed in your face and said, you're not Dylan Thomas. I'm not Patty Smith. This is, ain't the Chelsea Hotel. We're modern idiots. And who's going to hold you like me? Nobody. No fucking buddy. Nobody. You smoked, then ate seven bars of chocolate. We declared Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist. I scratched your head, you fall asleep, like a tattooed golden retriever. But you awaken with dread, pounding nails in your head. But I've read this one, where you come undone. I choose this cyclone with you. And who's going to hold you like me? Repeat, repeat. I laughed in your face and said, you're not Dylan Thomas. I'm not Patti Smith. This ain't the Chelsea Hotel. We're modern idiots. And who's going to hold you like me? No fucking buddy. Nobody. Sometimes I wonder if you're going to screw this up with me. But you told Lucy you'd kill yourself if I ever leave. And I had said that to Jack about you. So I felt seen. Seen. Everyone we know understands why it's meant to be. Because we're crazy, so tell me, who else is going to know me? At dinner, you take my ring off my middle finger and put it on the one people put wedding rings on. And that's the closest I've come to my heart exploding. You left your typewriter at my apartment, straight from the tortured poet's department. Who else decodes you? Who, who? So this song right here is the second song on the album and it is the second one where she talks about killing somebody's wife or fantasizing about killing and this is another one with the suicide ideation ideation and then the same with the um for the perspective of the man the guy too saying like oh if you ever leave me i'll just kill myself and i'll just die you know so that's suicide ideation on the other end as well like from another person's perspective but this is like, oh, when you're young in love and you feel like you're, the whole world will end if this relationship you are in is going to end. Like, you can never imagine your life without this person, without being with this person. Taylor Swift is an almost 40-year-old woman who's been in music for over 17 years and has dropped 11 albums. This is trying to be too relatable to this teenage, omnipresent self in this first love relationship. Like, nobody else sees you or knows you. Now, this is, like, very problematic because this is very narcissistic. Like, this is why people in Hollywood and celebrities and public figures, and that this is why people that are in that stratosphere of fame, why they have problems having successful relationships. And it's because when everything in your life, everything else is all about you, 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 you're loving somebody not on the basis of their core, their foundation, and who they are. You're not falling in love with them to the sacrifice and detriment of your own self, which it should never be if it's true love, stable, consistent, pure, good love anyway. Unconditional. That's not love. This isn't even lust. This is obsession. This is, this is speaking to a relationship that's not... And I don't know why women get so emotional like... like even when I was younger, like I've had relationships, you know, I've been married. I understand what it's like to feel like this about somebody, but it's like, this is taken to a totally different context in a totally different way. It, it, it almost borderlines on obs obsess obsessive compulsive and not just obsessive compulsive and narcissistic. It's very histrionic and borderline to, and, and that is the hallmark of borderline personality disorder. I'm not saying that Taylor Swift has that. I'm just saying that that is a, the biggest symptom of that. Like with Amber Heard or Rachel Meghan Markle, you see that their biggest fear is being alone, being abandoned, being broken up with. And that fear resonates into this mental, spiritual, physical realm for them. That their life is ended and going to end like to the point of talking about suicide. Like, because this person knows me, they see me, 
And my heart exploded when he finally asked me or even insinuated that he was going to put a ring on my finger. If you want to marry somebody, sometimes you have to be the one to say, hey, I really love you and we're doing great. Like, why don't we talk about this? Let's sit down and have a conversation. Okay, because an almost 40-year-old woman who's never been proposed to, never been in a marriage or a long-term successful or has a successful relationship should not be the one sitting here. Well, maybe that's why she's really good at these breakup songs and these heartbreak songs because, yeah, she has a lot of experience with uh, an experience with the breakup stuff because she's been linked to so many, so many dozens and dozens of men. Like her body count's got to be astronomical. And she's just only a couple years younger than me. So we're at the same age range. And I am nowhere near a fraction of what she was with before she was even 19. So I, I don't even understand it myself. But she has a lot of experience and has experimented with lyrics like this her entire career, where she's talking about break, breakups and how detrimental that that is to lose that. But if it was that great and awesome of a relationship and that person knew you and felt you and seen you from your soul, your heart, your mind, your emotion, why didn't it work out? Not just once, but dozens and dozens and dozens of times. That is a red flag if I have ever known or seen one. Huge. Huge. Everyone we know understands why it's meant to be. I don't think that's true. It sounds to me like people like Taylor Swift probably have a lot of friends that are like, oh, yeah, <laughs> and placating her and being yes men. They're not being a true friend that says, hey, I really love you and care about you, but this relationship is not good for you. Or I don't see how you guys are going to work long term. Like, I want you to be happy. I want you to have all the things that you have. And if she wants to be a wife and have motherhood, that is something that the clock is ticking on because even with Western and modern medicine, only 27% of the population will ever live to see their 70th birthday. A lot of people think that they have till their 90, 100. That's not true. That is not true. And even before Western and modern medicine, only 3% of people live to see their 70th birthday. So you don't have all the time in the world, Taylor Swift. You are a middle-aged white woman. You are a middle-aged white woman. And you appear to have everything but you don't. And your songs really, it's heartbreaking for me because I don't know her on that personal level. But her fans don't know her on that level either because they're going to know the same Taylor Swift that I see and know. It's not going to be any different for them. Even if you met her for five minutes, you're not going to know her. You're going to know the PR, the public relations side of her that is working and doing publicity for her albums or her shows or her movies or whatever else that she's promoting. But this, this writing that she's doing with Jack Antoff and Max Martin and everybody else that helps actually do her writing and her actual music to her songs, because believe it or not, she's not doing it all 100% on her own. And I'm not saying anything about her talent or her untalent or lack of talent or whatever. I'm not speaking on that, okay? What I'm speaking on is this is all coming from a real place. A real place somewhere within her. And this is just the same regurgitated types of songs and the same types of topics that I find dull. I find boring. Eh, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not surprised that she would put this album out, but I thought I would see some kind of evolution. When it came to Taylor Swift. Going somewhere above just this teenage obsessive stuck in this, oh, look at me, I'm giving out friendship bracelets like I'm a 12-year-old child at my shows. No, this is a middle-aged white woman. And talking about how her boyfriend said he was going to kill himself if she ever left, and she's going to do the same. She's going to kill herself and she's not ever going to be seen again. And who's going to know me and who's going to know you? It's the whole thought of erasure, of losing that, of closure, of moving on with life 
and having lost the one person that you felt the closest to. And this is what's indicative of why relationships like this don't work out for people. Because this song is not about you loving that person at their foundation, at their core of who they are and what they are for their heart, their soul, and their mind. Even if it comes at a compromise for you, your career, your life. This song is about what that person projects back to you. What that person makes you feel. What that person does for you. And that is the opposite of true, lasting, successful, real, unconditional love. And Taylor Swift cannot grasp that concept. And it's not only emotionally retardant, it's emotionally immature. And that comes across in her writing style and her lyrics. And anybody that can even read these on the surface and have a level of comprehension that is somewhat intelligent will see that. That will literally see that. And then she doesn't want to be called a snake. She doesn't want to be called crazy. But yet here she is calling herself crazy when she's with a boy. I'm definitely seeing lots of signs of wanting to maintain and have control. Not just over herself, over her relationship, over the perception of others over herself, over her career, and everything. And that obviously is very much bleeding, bleeding into her music. Because now it's all saturated with nothing but the same old same. And I'm disappointed because Taylor Swift isn't the best singer. She doesn't have the best voice. She doesn't have the best, uh, mediocre at best piano and guitar skills. But I'm not saying that she's not talented as far as writer goes. She obviously has put out 11 albums about the same couple topics over and over and over. That takes real skill and dedication to do that. I don't know if I could put out 11 albums, one of them being a double album, about I don't know how much I love my dog or how much I've broken up with somebody or how I'm moving on and feeling good, happy, and boppy about this and that. You know, that takes real skill and dedication to do 11 Technically, if you want to split it up to the double album, that would be like 12 full albums. But that takes a lot. That takes a lot to be able to (laughs) regurgitate the same kind of stuff with just different choices of words, same types of melodies and rhythms. But this song, yeah, not, not surprised at all with this one or the lyrics. It's unremarkable. In 50 years from now, when she's gone, in 100 years from now, Nobody is going to be looking back and clamoring for Taylor Swift's music. This is not going to be the artist from our generation, our time, or the last hundred years whose songs are going to resonate and speak on a deeper level to people across time. And that is the benchmark and that is the hallmark of what I consider truly successful and good music and talented musicians. Other people can disagree with me. That's fine. This is my opinion. I'm not barking at you about your opinion, but this is mine. This is what it is. This album, to me, is shit. It is shit, and I am entitled to my opinion, no matter what anybody else thinks. I gave it, and this is me going through this a second time. I've gone through all the lyrics, every song. I've listened to every single one of them, and that is more time and dedication that Taylor Swift is going to get from me that I don't feel she's deserving of. I gave her music a chance every other time and listened to it. She has a couple hits that are radio played that are kind of boppy, like Shake It Off and a few of the other ones that are not really that bad. They're catchy, they're boppy, but they also are not indicative. A lot of people say, oh, she wrote those songs when she was young. She's been writing songs consistently for the last 17 years on a mainstream level. And these songs that she has been writing, okay, from 17 on, I'd say once she passed 18, she is no longer 18, as in the sense she's a kid. She may have been younger, but she's not. And she hasn't been younger for her last several albums. So um, all of that is just bullshit and fluff. Bullshit and fluff. We're going to get right down to the substance of what she's saying. I'm not actually going to play the songs, but we're just going over the lyrics for this. I gave her that. 
my time, my attention, and filtering through all of her lyrics and listening to every song. And this is the opinion and the conclusion that I have drawn and I have come to. Whether somebody else likes it or not, that's fine. I'm not speaking on Taylor Swift as a person or a human other than when it's pertaining to why she's writing certain things that she's writing and how that is pertaining to why maybe she wrote that. There's definitely something <clears throat> very psychological and pathological going on here for this to be a continued thing. So anyway, that's my opinion. Here you have it. I will be doing every song in order and my thoughts and opinions on it. And it is just what it is. No ill will or anything towards anybody who likes it, who thinks it's positive, who thinks it's good, who likes the music. That's your opinion and you're entitled to that. And I don't think you're wrong. There's going to be people that like it. There's going to be people that don't. But not fooling me. Not fooling me at all. All right, guys. You all have a good night. I love you all. See you guys on the flip side.